secret societies, symbolism, fraternal orders, all the things and elements and groups that are behind what has happened. And I couldn't think of anybody better to introduce our next guest. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Jordan Maxwell. He will be up here for about 15 minutes. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you all for being here with us today. Um, a lot of kind words have been said about me, but I want to clarify a few things. I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything. I never have been. I'm not now, nor will I ever be. I'm too smart for that. <laughs> <laughs> because I know how much I don't know. And I'm learning every day that... I live, the world keeps opening up larger and larger. And I started this um, <coughs> escapade back in 1959. I started talking to audiences in 1962 about secret societies, the New World Order, occultism, and it was in 1966 that Anthony J. Hilder produced his first record set with Myron Fagan on Illuminati. And it was Anthony J. Hilder and Myron Fagan who introduced into American society the idea of secret societies and Illuminati. So when you hear the concept being discussed by anyone of secret societies, and especially that word Illuminati, remember it was Anthony J. Hilder who introduced it, and the man who talked about it, Anthony, actually produced the records. And it was Myron Fagan, a very important man that you need to know about, who's no longer with us. Myron Fagan, Myron Fagan was the man who introduced the idea of Illuminati. As I said, I was talking about these subjects back in 1962, before most of the people who now talk about it were even still in school. So consequently, I've... Uh, I've looked at many different areas of conspiracy since that time, and I'm appalled at uh, what I see happening in this country today. We are told that America is the land of laws, a nation built on laws. In point of fact, nothing could be further from the truth. America is run by people who are lawless. We have no law in America. And understand that. The law is whatever the powers that be in power happen to say it is today. Whatever they say it is, that's what the law is today. And it may change tomorrow. So what you need to understand is this is not a nation of laws. It's a nation of lawlessness. And somewhere along the line... We're going to be dealt with by that universal God force because of what we have allowed to happen in our country. Now, in relation to the subject today, which is the occult world of commerce, let me give you a couple of examples of why I think where you need to start thinking. If you uh, are going to send a box through the mail and you need to wrap it with some rope, you go out in the garage and you find some some rope and tie up the box and that should be sufficient to do the mailing. But if you're going to take that rope out to the edge of a 10-story building and hang on it, you better trust and you better examine the integrity of that rope now because your life hangs in the balance on it. Another example is if you owned a two-story building and you were going to put a lot of weight on the second floor if you, were, if you were smart, you would go downstairs first with the structural engineer, get on a ladder, and go up through the ceiling tiles and examine the floor that you're going to put that weight on to see if the floor is going to hold that kind of weight. So what you're doing is you are standing under the foundation you're going to build on. You're standing under to get understanding. Because that's where the word understand 
comes from, to stand under the foundation that you're building on. <clears throat> Understanding words is what you really need to start doing. You need to start doing your homework and understanding words. If you put an S in front of words, it becomes swords. And that's what words are. They are cutting. They can cause you great trouble. Humans are word control creatures. So we need to establish what words mean. Again, when we talk about law, there's a Roman maximum in law that says, for he that would be deceived, let him. Simply meaning, if you are so ignorant as to be deceived, then that's your business, that's your problem. So you need to do your homework and find out what the words mean, especially in relation to law and government. Because there is a whole a world of occultism that is operating today throughout the world in which you use certain words, and when those words are used in a court, they don't mean the same thing at all. Understanding law and the words of law, there are two things that this planet has. Water and earth, water and land. Consequently, there are two kinds of law, the law of the land and the law of water. You've heard the term law of the land, but in point of fact, that's precisely what this word means, law of the land, because it is the people who live on land. And that is opposed to something else called the law of the high seas or the law of water. You need to understand the difference. The law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on the land. And so consequently, the law of the land is different in every country. You can do things in America you can't do in Russia. You can do things in Africa you can't do in England. So the law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on that particular land. However, there is a higher law that dominates the entire world. It's called the law of the water of the law of the high seas. The law of water is referred to as the law of money. It doesn't matter what color you are, where you're from, or where you live. Money is money. And any time you're doing banking or using money, you are now under the law of water, maritime admiralty. If you go back in history, in ancient history, where all of this began, back in the land of Cana, and I've heard, you probably have heard in the Bible, the land of Cana. The Canaanites were Phoenician, Phoenician bloodline. And in the ancient Phoenician language, Cana meant merchant banker. The very word merchant comes from mer, M-E-R, for the sea, for water. As a mermaid, we have merchant. Merchant bankers. Let me give an example of the difference between the law of water and the law of the land. The law of water, as I said, is a law of banking, money, as opposed to the law of the custom of the people or the law of the land. Um, the Statue of Liberty must be put in water. It could not be put on American land as such. It had to be put in a harbor because it's not the Statue of Freedom. It's a statue of liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls into port on a ship. He gets liberty. He's not free. So America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave. We're not free or brave, period. We're not free. This is not a free country. Now let me give you an example of how this law of the water works. Why is it that you have to go to court? People are always concerned about going to court. You go to court because you play basketball and tennis on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Why? <laughs> that's what it is. It's a racket. 
And make no mistake, they do not pick words by chance. These words are very serious. They do not use words and terms um, with no avail. These words are very important. When you go into a court, what's the idea of going to court? It's a game, like basketball. The whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. Uh, one team gets up and they throw the ball over to that team of lawyers. That team gets up and throws the ball back into their court. And consequently, it's a ball game. And the judge is wearing a black robe, so he is the referee. The judge is the referee. He doesn't care which side wins or loses because he's going to get paid anyway. So he couldn't care less. He's merely there as a referee, and that's why he wears a black robe. And that's another interesting subject we can get into later. But the judge is a, is a referee between two teams. The judge, that we are told, rules from the bench. The word bench in Latin is a bank. Therefore, the judge rules for the bank. Where do you find banks? You find banks on both sides of a river. They're called river banks. And what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current sea. <laughs> the juice. Consequently, your money is current sea because it's the flow, the cash flow. And I'll give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into a harbor, all ships are referred to as female. Airships, rocket ships, sailing ships are always female. Why? There's a very good reason. Maritime Admiralty Banking Law says all ships are female because uh, they're carrying items. They're carrying items for money, and so consequently they are under Maritime Admiralty Law. Admiralty is where we get the word admiral, admiral of the Navy. <clears throat> Let me give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into harbor, it parks at the dock, and it ties off at the dock. The captain has to provide for the um, port authorities a certificate of manifest, because yesterday the ship was not here. But this morning the ship pulled in, so it has manifested. So consequently, all the products, the $800 million worth of TVs or Toyotas, have manifested. So each one of those items coming off of that ship has come off of water. And each end, they has come in a ship. And consequently, on a ship, all ships have a captain. The word captain comes from a Latin word, capital, money. So the captain represents the money that's on board the ship. And as I said, the captain has to present to the port authorities a certificate of manifest for each and every item. How much does it weigh? What color is it? How many doors does it have? Etc. And consequently, the captain presents a certificate of manifest. The ship is sitting in its berth. Wherever a ship sits when it docks is called its berth. She sits in her berth birthing a ship. Consequently, all the items, as I said, coming off that ship represent money. They came in on water. They are maritime admiralty product. And this is true all over the world. Now, when you were born, your mother's water broke. And when your mother's water broke, you came out. And this is why you have to have a birth certificate because you are a maritime admiralty product under international law. You are considered, your body is considered a maritime admiralty product. Your mother delivered you. This is why if you go to Sears and buy a refrigerator, they will ship it to you. They will deliver it. And that's why you were in your delivery room. Your mother was delivering a product. Maritime Admiralty, you came down your mother's birth canal. <laughs> and once you, uh, and as you're taking one of the, uh, the televisions or the cars off the ship and it falls down and breaks, 
uh, that's all right. Sometimes they're stillborn, so consequently you've lost money on that one. Therefore, you have to have a death certificate.